Welcome back, everybody. I know I was gone last week and we didn't have a wrap up, but I had to pop down to New Orleans and get engaged real quick. Uh, but we are back this week to talk about a bunch of different Warhammer stuff. The most pressing thing we have to talk about is a little game that just came out today. And although that's going to be the focus for the Warhammer community for the next month or so, there's still some more that Games Workshop is coming out with and giving us that I want to cover. But I'm Hoodguard and this is your Monday Warhammer wrap up. Let's get into it. There is no peace amongst the stars, for in the grim, dark future, there is only war. Alright, we're going to start with some of the things that came out last week that I missed before we get into Space Marine 2. But if you want to skip to that part, I'll have it marked in the timeline. Our first topic today is the Nova Open reveal and the roadmap that was given for Warhammer 40,000. Like at a lot of these tournaments and conventions, Games Workshop will have some type of reveal for what's coming up in the next few months or year. And we've been getting a lot of leaked roadmaps over the last couple of months, so there was a lot of anticipation around this particular reveal. And I have to say, it was kind of disappointing. I think people expected there to be at least one or two more armies that would get their codexes and refreshes for 10th edition. But from what the roadmap is telling us, Blood Angels, who have already gotten their codex and 10th edition refresh, are going to end out our year. Apart from a few data slate releases, there are going to be no more models released for 40k. Which is just a huge bummer on top of a year that featured a lot of lackluster model releases. The consensus in the community is that Age of Sigmar is beating 40k's ass when it comes to models. And I kind of have to agree with that. Now they did tell us three of the factions that are coming in 2025. There's going to be an Astra Militarum refresh featuring the Death Corps of Krieg, we're getting more Eldari, and more Imperial Knights. The last thing on this roadmap said that there would be more codexes, big names, and chaos treats coming. As far as the other codexes, I'm winning at minimum the Leagues of Votan and the Drukhari. When it comes to big names that could mean Henry Cavill, that could mean some other project that's featuring a big name in Warhammer. And I'm not too sure about special Chaos Treats, I'm hoping that's either an Emperor's Children refresh or something to do with Chaos Knights. And that's it, that is the roadmap for the next year or so. It doesn't seem like a lot, and it's not, but I'm wondering if this is because they're working on something bigger on the background, or if that's just me having wishful thinking. Whatever the case is, this is the upcoming landscape for 40k. Alright, next to talk about is the Tithes. Now I'm doing a review of each episode of The Tides, so if you want a more in-depth review, you can go watch those on my channel. But I did want to talk about the second episode for just a little bit. This episode was titled Harvest, and it's about the Psyker Tithe that planets have to give up to the Imperium. The big surprise in this episode was that they featured a female Custodes for the first time. And again, if you want to know more about what I think on that, you can go watch my episode review. But honestly, my favorite thing about the episode was the fact that we had so many Imperium aligned factions interacting with each other. There was the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, the Adeptus Arbides, the Adeptus Custodes, the Adeptus Astartes, and the Sisters of Silence. It was an excellent showcase of the hierarchy of the Imperium and exactly who defers to who in what cases. I don't want to spoil anything in this video, so if you do want to watch it, it's available on Warhammer TV. All right, let's talk about a couple of things that are coming out. For my people who've been following along with my painting journey, you know that I'm a big advocate of using the free mini of the month as practice. Well, we got the reveal of what the new mini of the month would be, and it's available right now at your local Games Workshop store. Don't worry, it's not a Space Marine. It's not even from 40k. The free miniature of the month generally switches between AOS and 40k. Last month we got a Space Marine Scout, but this month we're getting a Cruel Boy. This cunning son of Mork is going to be a joy to paint because it has a ton of textures from the metal spear tip to the wood handle to the scale cloak that he's wearing. These are not an infinite resource, so make sure to go to your local store if you want one. And last up before we get to Space Marine 2 is the Saturday pre-order. I don't think there's anything model-wise going up for 40k this Saturday, but there is a limited edition book set that's coming out. Nate Crowley's Twice Dead King collection is coming out in a beautiful limited edition that's signed by the author. It'll feature the two novels of the series along with a short novella titled Severed. I was surprised they came out with this one first rather than the Infinite and the Divine that had its limited edition announced at the beginning of the year. For all my Necron fans, these are essential books, so this is your chance to own a special copy of them. Now that all of that is out of the way, we can get to Space Marine 2. This game that we have been waiting for for over a decade has finally come out, and to be honest, it is one of the best gaming experiences of this year. 
I'm not being paid to say this, I'm not putting any bias into it, it is literally one of the better games to come out this year. I'm going to do a longer YouTube and TikTok review of the video game, but I just wanted to put my initial thoughts down here. The game has fidelity. Graphically, it's gorgeous. They made a beautiful world in the grimdark future. And I don't know about anybody else's experience, but this game runs like butter on my PC. And this is a PC that doesn't have all the latest hardware either. The gameplay loop is good and it brings everything that you wanted from Space Marine 1 into the new generation. You feel like an undefeatable Space Marine. You do have challenge, but for the most part you feel invincible and it's not a bad feeling. The swarms and hordes of enemies are really cool, the boss fights are very engaging, and the new improved parry mechanic makes for really smooth combat. And all of this is layered over a story that doesn't take too long to get rolling and doesn't let off the gas until the very end. And that's just the campaign. I've played maybe 15 to 20 hours of the PvP mode and I'm addicted. There are definitely some nerfs and buffs that have to happen with a couple of classes and I'm hoping they're going to add more classes in the future, but the foundation that they have right now is solid. If you've been on the fence on whether to get this game or not, go ahead and buy it, enjoy the campaign, and try and find some friends to play the PvP because it is worth it. That is going to about do it for this week's wrap up. Make sure to leave any questions in the comments below, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all in the next one.